Dixie Alley, one of the most tornado-prone regions in the world. Every year, powerful storms carve paths of destruction across the southeast, leaving communities forever changed. The question is, what will 2025 bring? In this in-depth forecast, we'll analyze long-term trends, past outbreaks, and the latest data to predict what's coming this February and March. Will we see an early start? Could a major outbreak be on the horizon? Let's break it all down, starting with why Dixie Alley is always the first to wake up. Tornado season doesn't begin in April. It starts long before then, with February and March historically seeing major tornado outbreaks in the deep south. But why does this region become active so early? The biggest factor is La Nina. This climate pattern strengthens the subtropical jet stream, enhancing wind shear and instability across the southeast. Meanwhile, Gulf moisture surges northward, fueling storms before the rest of Tornado Alley even sees activity. The result? Some of the first major tornado events of the year, but will 2025 follow this trend? To answer that, let's analyze the temperature and precipitation outlook. The atmosphere is already showing signals that could shape this tornado season. Let's start with temperatures. Above average temperatures are expected across the southeast, which will enhance instability an essential ingredient for tornadoes. Core air lingering in the Midwest and Great Plains could create sharper temperature contrast, helping to strengthen the jet stream. Precipitation is expected to be near normal, which should provide enough moisture for storm development. One concern, late February might trend slightly drier, potentially limiting early activity. However, as March approaches, things could rapidly intensify. So what's the wild card that could determine just how active this season becomes? The jet stream. The jet stream acts as the steering mechanism for storms. And in 2025, we're already seeing a pattern that suggests an active setup. By mid-February, the jet stream is expected to dip deeper into the southeast, increasing severe weather potential. Stronger wind shear will provide the necessary ingredients for rotating storms, especially when combined with gulf moisture. However, timing is everything. If the jet stream remains strong and positions southward, severe weather risks increase dramatically. But if it weakens or shifts north too soon, storm activity may be delayed. This uncertainty is why historic data is so valuable. What can past tornado seasons tell us about what might happen this year? To understand what's possible this season, we need to look at past years with similar atmospheric setups. Two years stand out, 2008 and 2011. February 2008 saw the infamous Super Tuesday outbreak. 87 tornadoes, including multiple EF4s, tearing through the south. March 2011 produced over 100 tornadoes, setting the stage for the catastrophic April 2011 Super Outbreak. Both years had a La Nina pattern, just like 2025. This historical parallel suggests an increased risk for significant tornado outbreaks. So where will the biggest threats be this year? Let's break down the risk zones. After breaking down all available data, including historical trends, jet stream positioning, and long range model forecasts, we can now pinpoint the most at risk regions for tornado activity in early 2025. This year's outlook suggests a progressive shift in risk zones moving from west to east as we transition from February into March. February's tornado risk is expected to focus on the western half of Dixie Alley, covering parts of the lower Mississippi Valley and Mid-South. Eastern Texas and Louisiana, a hotspot for early season squall lines capable of producing QLCS tornadoes and a few isolated supercells. Arkansas, Mississippi, this corridor is notorious for EF2+. Plus tornadoes due to an enhanced wind shear. Western Alabama and Western and Middle Tennessee. If storms hold together, this region could experience damaging tornadoes before the activity shifts eastward. March's tornado risk is expected to shift eastward, impacting the central and eastern portions of Dixie Alley, covering parts of the southeast and Tennessee Valley. Alabama and Georgia, high potential for supercell-driven EF2 plus tornadoes Eastern Tennessee, a unique risk area due to its terrain-driven storm behavior. Carolinas, a conditional threat that could intensify with the jet stream alignment. The transition zone consists of Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. This region could experience 
fast moving tornadoes in February and longer track violent tornadoes in March make it one of the most dangerous places this season. But speaking of tornadoes, not all the storms are the same. What kinds of tornadoes should we expect this season? Not all tornadoes are created equal. In Dixie Alley, storm mode is just as important as the forecast itself. The type of system that spawns a tornado can determine how dangerous it will be, how much warning time people get, and how widespread the damage will be. That is why we need to break down the two dominant tornado producing storm modes in this region. QLCS tornadoes and supercell tornadoes. What is a QLCS tornado? QLCS stands for Quasi Linear Convective System, a term that describes a fast moving squall line filled with damaging winds and embedded tornadoes. These storms are notorious for being difficult to detect, developing rapidly, and sometimes going unnoticed until they are already causing damage. How do they form? QLCS tornadoes develop when strong winds surge ahead of a squall line, creating small but intense circulations along the leading edge of the storm. These circulations can quickly spin up into tornadoes, often lasting only a few minutes before dissipating. Characteristics of QLCS tornadoes Typically shorter lived than supercell tornadoes lasting just a few minutes. Wind speeds can still be destructive, often reaching EF1 to EF2 strength. Difficult to detect on radar because they are embedded with heavy rain and strong winds. Tend to occur in early season events, especially in February and early March, when forcing is strong but the instability is more limited. Why are QLCS tornadoes dangerous? The biggest danger with QLCS tornadoes is how little warning time people have. Because they form so quickly and often with heavy rain, tornado sirens may go off only seconds before impact. This makes them especially dangerous at night, when visibility is poor and many people are asleep. While QLCS tornadoes are more common in February and early March, things can change dramatically later in the season. That is when we begin to see the rise of the most powerful tornado producing storms, supercells. What is a supercell tornado? Unlike QLCS tornadoes, supercell tornadoes form in isolated, discrete thunderstorms that can last for hours. These storms develop powerful rotating updrafts called mesocyclones, which help sustain and strengthen tornadoes for much longer periods. How do they form? Supercells form when a combination of strong wind shear, high instability, and ample moisture interact in the atmosphere. As warm, humid air rises and meets colder, drier air aloft, the storm begins to rotate. If conditions are just right, this rotation tightens into a tornado that can stay on the ground for miles. Characteristics of supercell tornadoes tend to last much longer than QLCS tornadoes, sometimes staying on the ground for over an hour, usually much stronger, often reaching EF2 to EF5 intensity. Easier to detect on radar, thanks to their distinct hook echo signature and well-defined rotation. More common in late March and April, when the jet stream aligns with deeper moisture and instability. Why are supercell tornadoes dangerous? Supercell tornadoes are responsible for some of the most devastating tornado outbreaks in US history. These storms can produce mile-wide EF4 to EF5 tornadoes, capable of leveling entire neighborhoods. Unlike QLCS tornadoes, they often provide more lead time for warnings, but their sheer intensity makes them extremely deadly. If the Gulf of Mexico continues to pump warm, unstable air into the southeast as we approach March, we could see more supercell-driven tornadoes this season, increasing the risk for long-track, violent tornadoes. Which storm mode will dominate in 2025? So what kind of tornadoes should we expect this season? That depends on two key factors, forcing and instability. If strong forcing but low instability, QLCS tornadoes will be more common. These are short-lived, fast-moving tornadoes embedded within squall lines, making them harder to detect and often striking with little warning. This setup is most likely in February when strong upper-level winds dominate but deeper gulf moisture is still lacking. If moisture and instability surge in March, supercells will take over, producing stronger, longer track tornadoes. 
these storms can stay on the ground for miles, leading to a much greater threat for large-scale destruction. This pattern is most likely in March, when rising temperatures, increasing instability, and stronger Gulf moisture return create a more volatile atmosphere. Key Takeaway February will likely bring more QLCS tornadoes, but by March, conditions could shift in favor of supercell-driven outbreaks. If moisture returns aggressively, March could be one of the most dangerous early tornado months in recent years. The transition from winter to spring will be critical in determining the severity of the 2025 tornado season. Now it's your turn. Based on what we've covered, the trends, patterns, and risks, how do you think this season will unfold? Drop a comment below. Have you ever experienced a tornado in Dixie Alley? Do you agree with this forecast, or do you see a different trend playing out? Let's discuss in the comments. And don't forget, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any updates as we track the season storms. Thank you for watching, stay weather aware, and we'll see you in the next forecast update.